Well, I know you don't smoke weed, so I'm gonna get you high today because it's Friday, you got no job, you ain't got no shit to do. Just kidding, we're not gonna be smoking weed here. It's all about reviewing pro wrestling. So, for today's episode, we're actually gonna be doing four reviews. Now, the first one is from Choco Pro with 328 that was pre taped back on September 3rd. I'm trying to understand why they did not release it but um as you know the weekend was kind of chaotic but there were some interesting feature matches in that one as well uh majority of them are tag team action but nonetheless however we do have new japan back with their latest tour the road to destruction as you know we have certain matches that are taking place yoda suji it has challenged for the iwgp uk title against will osprey but however as you know, Evil declared himself the self-proclaimed IWGP champion due to the fact that he claims that Sonata had forfeited the belt, which is a load of horse crap. But we'll see what happens till we get there. And of course, we have All Elite Wrestling with Rampage as we continue with more of the Grand Slam tournament. We have women's action. We got plenty other things taking place. And then we have... Who's going to level up on this latest episode of NXT Level Up? And then after that, we'll be doing our last and final thing, which is news updates. What's been going on in the world of pro wrestling? So, let's get ready for another episode of the Lead at Wrestle Zone. Welcome everybody to Deleted Wrestle Zone. All things that is pro wrestling with AEW, NXT, New Japan Pro Wrestling, Impact Wrestling, the National Wrestling Alliance, various promotions, wrestlers, matches, and championships. I am your host, Jerrod here. So, if you are new to the channel, welcome. This is a channel where we review a lot of pro wrestling from various promotions all over the world. Doesn't matter if it's here in the US, Japan, Mexico, Canada, all of it. We also do some interesting stuff such as the Unagi Sayaka Watch, discussions, uh, whatnot, and some news updates and news the updates alert. The whole thing we can do for all of you. So if you like what you see, please subscribe to us and we'll be doing a lot of reviewing for all of you from your various, various prom uh, promotions you like or you guys never heard of. And also, if you like this episode, please give us a like on the, the click button and of course, leave a nice comment down on the, on the below. So let's begin with our very first review, Choco Pro, with number 328. Uh, it opened up with uh, May Shruga giving the lowdown how the show was in fact going to be, what matches are going to take place, the whole thing. And of course, she has a bit of a little fun with her fan base and all that, which is a lot of more fun in that. Hopefully one day I get to experience that, but that'll be somewhere down the line in the future for me. Now, our very first match I believe we have is Tag Team Action. We got... Chi Koshikawa uh, teaming with Sayaka, who are in fact have been a very strong, capable tag team re in recent months, all the way from last year. Now, um, they will face against Nonoka Seto and, of course, Mei Shruga. Now, Nonoka Seto is the much recent new girl in uh, Choco Pro and also got to move. Um, very interesting that she gets to team up. Now, I'm not sure if Mei Shruga took any credit in training a nonaka seto like she did with her sister Mia Yatsuba. if you guys remember Mia Yatsuba and nonaka seto are in fact real life sisters but they have different names um the short version of that the reason they have separate different names was because they wanted to forge their own individuality as singles competitors but on occasion they were trying to team up so that is something we don't know if they will be doing that down the line but we'll see how that goes. But however, the match was pretty good. Now, Nonaka Seto has like this mean streak type of attitude. Like, not in a desperation to win, but to prove that she can win. But however, she is 
teaming with Mei Shuga, who we have seen her has faced the biggest challenges in her career. But however, uh, the, the teamwork between Chi and Sayaka has always been strong. Now keep in mind, these two ladies uh, are part of the same class. They're part of the same fourth generation of Got to Move uh, Yoshi wrestlers, trained together along with um, with uh, Tokiko and of course um, Sayuri, who is not present at the time. Oh well, she's there, but she's not uh, wrestling. But uh, it's interesting. Now, I did often say how those two should be teaming up more often because they um, they have challenged for tag team titles in the past, but they were unsuccessful. But however, they know that they're not uh, they're, that Mei Shuga is predictable, very creative in her in her way of wrestling. But however, Nono Cassetto is the X factor here, who is the least experienced wrestler. But it was of course the t double teamwork between both Chi and Saya to put her away, but allowed for Sayaka to pick up the win. So that's a pretty good match to enjoy. So I'm sure that Nonoka will grow up eventually to get a very good win in the future. Now our next one is a three-way match. All the way we have, all the way from Thailand, Dr. Gore making his presence known. He takes on Masahiro Takanashi, who is the current setup champion. Uh, and then of course there's Tokiko Kirara. Now you probably would have assumed that there's anything could go chaotic between in this match. Now, however. Uh, Masa is a very crafty, slick wrestler uh, that you ever see. But however, we know that Tokiko has a bit of the striking capability. She does have some very uh, roundhouse kicks that are very strikeable. But Dr. Gore, he's very predictable. You don't know what to expect. But however, Masahiro Takanashi with his cr uh, trade craft, he was able to apply a win when he pinned Tokiko. But at the same time, trying to prevent Dr. Gore from trying to stop the three count. While well, he was unsuccessful, Masahiro Takanashi walked away with the W. Now, our last match is tag team match, and we got Mia Yatsuba teaming up once again with Mochi Natsumi. Uh, they take on against uh, Kaiori Yonayama and Sayaka Obihiro. Now, Mia and Mochi have, t uh, in the beginning, they were a bit of opponents for quite some time. But for some reason, Mochi decided to take her under her wing. I don't know if she saw something in her or she likes her. That is something I'm still unclear on. But her teaming with Mochi makes perfect sense because, uh, as you know, Mia Tsuba is the only non-wrestler that's ever been trained by Emi Sakura. Now, Emi Sakura, as you know, has been living here in the states. Mia is the only one who is one of the few, one of the er, um, the non-Emi Sakura trainees. Basically, was never trained by her. But Mochi has. So I wouldn't be surprised if she decides to help her in her training or whatever. But they are a capable team. They're learning from each other and all that. But however, the X factor is the same thing with like Mia with her with like her sister Nonoka. Mia has the least experience. Now she has picked up wins in um in the tag team only once. But as a singles competitor or her making the win has not has has not yet happened just yet. But of course, um I, what I did like is how uh, Kari Yama was smart enough to try to isolate um, each, uh, both Mia and Mochi from each other. And that helped a lot. So basically when they, um, Kari was able to separate Mochi from Mia and Mia was unable to defend herself when she got pinned by Obi, it was just like that. She won. So, so yeah, Obi and Coyote actually picked up the win. Now, for a jargon tournament, this was a very interesting one. I can't even believe that Mei Shuga was eliminated right away. And so was Sayaka and a few others. But I can skip ahead. In the finals of the jargon tournament, it was Nonoka Seto and Kaori Yanayama. I was, like, thinking she would have done the same thing what her sister did. Now, keep in mind, Mia Yasuba has been successful in, in Jankin. And I was thinking, oh, my God, she would finally get her opportunity to win Jankin. But no, it did not. She was close. She'll get there soon. But also at the post show, uh, they celebrated oh, Sayako Bihiro's birthday. I thought it was very sweet of them to do that to celebrate for her. Uh, you don't see that rarely in, in promotions like these. But with them, Got to Move and Chocobo are completely different from what everybody else does. So uh, if you want to check out this um, this uh, show, you can check it out for free on YouTube. Just uh, search Gato Move and there it is. and of course choco pro you'll see it from there so uh, i think that's pretty much it right now for this so let's move on with new japan pro wrestling
Okay, New Japan Pro Wrestling, we are now on the road to destruction. The actual show will take place on September 24th. A lot of things will be taking place. As you know, Yoda Suji will be facing Will Ospreay for the IWGP UK title. Uh, people still refer to it as the US title. Then, of course, we have the um, the IWGP World Heavyweight title that's currently being held hostage by Evil, who claims that he is the new champion that Sonata forfeited because he's unfit to be champion. Well, we all know that's a load of horse crap coming from his mouth. But, however, let's get to the whole thing from start to finish. Our opening match, we have tag team action. We got just five guys. Doki and Kanemaru taking on Ruski, Taguchi, and Yo. So it's interesting to see those two pairing. We know that um, Yo, uh, his tag partner, where he's at right now, his tag partner is currently in IW in, in Impact Wrestling, but we don't know when he'll be back. But however, as you know, Junior Tag League, uh, uh, Super Junior Tag League should be taking up soon. But however, we'll see how that rolls out. But uh, throwing some of the usual tricks by Taguchi may have been effective. But however, when it comes to just five guys, that's a difference. But it was Kanemaru who picked up the, the win when he modified a pin into a sort, somewhat of a figure four to, to pick up the win against Taguchi. That kind of helped. So that would bring a little bit of momentum to just five guys. Now our next match, we have a very interesting one. We have Shota Umino, Oscar Lobe, uh, Master Wato, and Yuji Nagata, who just came back from All Japan. Uh, they take on Tomoaki Humna and the members of Just uh, Strong Style, El Desperado, Ren Narita, and Minoru Suzuki. Now, of course, as always, when you put Shota Umino and Ren Narita in the same match, all hell breaks loose between those two. These guys are part of the same class together, as you know, back when they were young lions. But the obvious question is, who's going to be the one reaching the top between the two? That's always been the clear-cut mind of everything. However, in this particular match, it was Ren Narita who reigned supreme when he applied the Cobra Twist onto Oscar Lobe. But now you know this feud between Narita and Umino is far from over. They will be a seven best of series between those two. So I can't wait to see how this goes out. So which one of these two is going to reign supreme now? In our next match, we have TMDK, Bad Dude Tito, Shane Haste, and Mikey Nichols taking on Chaos members Toto Yanu, Yoshihashi, and Hiroki Goto. Now keep in mind, guys, TMDK have our challenging Bushimon, which consisted of Hiroki Goto and Yoshihashi, for the IWGP Heavyweight Tag Team titles. So they will be in the series of matches before we get to destruction on the 24th of September. But, however, it was, of course, um, Yano who fell victim by TMDK when they picked up the win. A clear-cut message to TMDK to Bushimon that they will gain those titles one way or the other. Now, our next match, we have Tiger Mask, Togi Makabe, uh, Hiroyoshi Tenzan, and Satoshi Kojima taking on Yuto Nakajima, he, um, Hiroshi Tanahashi, and the K members of Chaos, uh, Tomo Ishii, and Kaguchika Okada. Now, keep in mind, guys, uh, Tanahashi, Ishii, and Okada are the current six -man, never open weight six-man tag team champions. However, this match went... Um, all hell broke loose in this match because apparently a bit of the rivalry between Ishii and Tenzan has exploded. Resulted of no one listening to the ref, uh, the, the match has been thrown out at, into a no contest. But however, the feud between Tenzan and Ishii rages on. I wouldn't be surprised if there's going to be a match between those two at um, possibly as an opening, as a pre-show before the destruction show. I don't know, but anything's a possibility. But we'll see how that progresses on. Now, our next match, we got the United Empire, consisting of the newest member, Callum Newman, Hinare, Great Okan, and Jeff Cobb, taking on LIJ's Shot uh, Yoda Suji, Hiromi, uh, Hiromu Takahashi, Shingo Tagagi, and Tetsuya Naito. Now, interesting facts about this. Now, keep in mind. Yoda Suji is facing Will Ospreay, the leader of United Empire for the IWGP 
UK title. So that is something that's been set upon. But however, Jeff Cobb is setting his sights on facing Naito, demanding that he put the contract for his opportunity at Wrestle Kingdom on the line. Reason behind that is because Jeff Cobb has beaten Naito before. So he feels in the interest of fairness, I deserve a shot of that. So we'll see what that takes place. But however, Naito is playing mind games with everybody. As you know, when it comes to having a contract for that particular match, you get a suitcase. Well, it looks like it wasn't ready yet. So he, Naito decided to play a little games to Jeff Cobb. But in the end of this match, Yoda Suji once again sent a direct message to Will Ospreay when he speared Callum Newman. And just like that, L.I.J. wins supreme. And that's how it goes. But as Naito would say, tranquilo. Now our next match is a championship match. We have the IWGP World Television Champion on the line. Uh, Zack Sabre Jr. defends the belt against Rohi Oiwa, who is currently on loan uh, to uh, Pro Wrestling Noah. I did mention this before, as you know. As the Young Lions graduate the, um, the, the dojo, they go on excursions. They go to different parts of the world. Um, I'm trying to remember where, who, who, where, what, what. But uh, we know that Fujita should be on his way to the, to Australia. As we know, he's hanging around with the the sniper of the sky, Robbie Eagles. Some try to remember who else is gonna be there. But yeah. But anyway, Raya Oyua graduated from the from the dojo, and now he's on loan at um, in Pro Wrestling. Lord. He was scouted by none other than the supernova of Noah. Kato Kiyomiya but however this was a huge opportunity for him but I kind of figured this match was definitely going to go with Zack Sabre Jr. because he is one of the best technical wrestlers ever and uh, he was going to use his submission tactics to pick up the win now our main event features the House of Torture, Show and Evil now these scumbags on the other hand are telling the ring announcers no 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 say we are the champions now, we all know that's not true. Show and Evil stole those titles because they claim they are the law. Evil says that Sanat is an unfit champion, that he gave up the right to be champion. No, he did not. He stole the belt. New Japan had probably had enough of them. And I'm sure they're praying right now and hoping that on the 24th that Taichi and Sonata get their belts back and beat the living crap out of evil and show to teach them a lesson to take that doesn't uh, that for stealing titles that doesn't belong to them to begin with. Now the only reason evil is like this is because he thinks he is the law, and not to mention he is he is in desperation to go to Wrestle Kingdom. So he even says this about Sonata. He says that Sonata was nothing to a puppet for him back when he was still with Lij, but. The only difference between Sonata and Evil is this. Evil left because of his jealousy towards Naito. That's, that's been my honest opinion. He was jealous of Naito's jealousy. But Sonata left on a different reasons. He felt that if he, if he would have won the New Japan Cup, he felt that staying would have meant that Naito was the one who's shining the most. So he felt he had to step away because he knew he can do things on his own. And he had help from the people that matter to him. And that is Taichi. Taichi always had his back. And that's why they became good friends ever since then. But however, when it comes to House of Torture taking on Sho, uh, uh, Taichi and Sonata, of course their dirty tactics was going to play out with the ref knocked out. Using Dick Togo, that little weasel, to use the garage. And of course Sho with his tool. However, Evil got away with it when he applied everything as evil and declaring himself that he is still the champion. We all know that's not true. But I hope Sonata gets his belt back and beat the crap out of Evil and teach him once and for all he is not the real champion. He's even saying that Sonata is the challenger. What a load of crap coming from his mouth. But we'll see what happens until then. So right now, let's just move on to our next review, and I believe it's AEW Rampage. Alrighty then, AEW Rampage. Now, as you know, we're heading to New York City for Grand Slam. We're all looking forward to it. However, in this particular episode of Rampage, we are continuing with more of the AEW World Title 
Grand Slam Elimination Tournament match. Now, our first match involving that, we have um, Penta El Cero Miedo taking on Jay Lethal. But of course, the dickwads were talking about uh, Jeff Jarrett, Satnam Singh, Sanjay Dutt, and of course, the, the queen herself. Um, what's her name? Karen Jarrett was going to show up. But uh, unfortunately, they got their hands caught in a cookie jar and the ref told them to you're out of here so that happens but luckily Alex Brahamantes was playing smart he decided to stay out of it but however he was very helpful in the end because of course Jeff Jarrett left something behind for Jay Lethal to use and if you guys know what that is that is his guitar that he left behind however Alex Brahamantes was able to take it away from him allowing for Penta to put J Lethal in the fear factor then one two three it's over right from there now however he will be facing um whoever walks out in the main event between jeff jarrett and samoa joe we'll get to that in a bit now as you know when it comes to rampage chris jericho is in fact the commentator but out of the blue we saw sammy guevara comes out saying how much he wants to punch Je uh, jericho in the face so basically, there's been a bit of animosity between those two recently that dates back all the way to All In. If you guys remember, uh, Sammy was in Jericho's corner when he lost to Will Ospreay. And Jericho admitted himself that he wasn't in his right state of mind, that he felt that he should not have taken his frustrations out on him. And he apologized for it. But he also said that he would like to team up with them more often as a tag team. The aim for the AEW World Tag Team titles, which resulted, of course, them to have a match against Ozzy Open, who will not who will not tolerate guys like them trying to steal their thunder. However, their tag match was successful, but there was a bit of miscommunication or misfire, and of course, a misfire with Jericho to Sammy. So, however, uh, Jericho realized, okay, look, we're fighting, we're having a disagreement. Let's just let it all out. Let, let, let's beat the crap out of each other let it out of our system so they thought how about grand slam in new york city which is of course it's gonna be a good match so he said that he'll jericho even said let's see who is the better man on this one so even sammy agrees so to proceed further more between them two they have to let it all out their little frustrations so we'll see what happens until we get there now our next match we have the women's in a six women tag team match we have Anna J, the Bunny, and of course Tail Valkyrie, taking on Hikaru Shida, Sky Blue, and Britt Baker. Now you probably would have assumed things would have been normal between uh, Hikaru Shida and Britt Baker, but in recent times we have been seeing miscommunication between those two. But however, it was Britt Baker who won the match when she applied the lockjaw on to um, who was it, the Bunny? Oh yeah, on the Bunny, and it was over right from there. Now, our next match we have, of course, is Daddy Match, uh, Jake, da uh, Matt Menard, and Cool Hands, Angela Parker, along with Jake Hager, taking on the Young Bucks. Now, keep in mind, the Young Bucks have not had a good, successful couple of weeks. In All In, they lost their their, the, the match against FTR for the AEW World Tag Team titles. They lost the four-way match, so they're trying to find a way to pick up the win. However, Menard and Parker are currently trying to build momentum to get themselves in the picture once and for all. But in the end, it was the BTE trigger that put away Menard, allowing the Young Bucks to pick up a good win. In our main event, we continue with more of the AEW World Title Grand Slam Elimination Tournament. We have Jeff Jarrett and Samoa Joe. Now, to be fair with all of you, watching this match, I figured where this match is going to go because Samoa Joe as you know he has one thing in mind and that mind is to get to MJF one way or the other that's what he wants and of course he put uh Jeff Jarrett I mean Jeff Hardy in a in a chokehold sorry I said that Jeff Jarrett I already mentioned that but right now it's Jeff Hardy in this match he put him in a chokehold Jeff Hardy had no other choice but to tap out and it was over right from there so Samoa Joe will meet Penta in the in the mat in the match for this so we'll see how this progress in the net in the sem uh, in the semifinals uh, i think that's pretty much it right now with aw let's move on with nxt level up okay our final review 
who's going to level up on this latest episode of NXT Level Up. Let's find out. Now, however, because of what we began a while back, we do have the Global Heritage Invitational with Group B taking place. So we'll get to that. So who will walk out as, of course, the winner in, in that particular match? Well, let's start from the very beginning all the way to the end. Our first match, we have Ikemenjiro taking on Tavion Heights. Now, this was going to be a good match in some aspect. Now, we've seen Ikemenjiro, what he can do as a character in the ring. However, Tavion Heights, Tavion Heights is a very um, capable wrestler for collegiate-style wrestling that sort of thing. You probably would have think that uh, because of a character like Ikemenjiro would have been capable of picking up the win. But however, Tavion Heights with his collegiate style wrestling did play a good factor on this when he applied a somewhat of a suplex onto Ikemenjiro and pick up his first win. So that's great for him. So we'll see how much he'll progress even further. Now our next interview, this is before we head to our next match involving... Uh, Fallon Henley and Carmen Petrovic. Now, Petrovic, as you know, has not recently had a good successful win so far, but she will face against a cowgirl, of course, a Fallon Henley. I think that's going to be interesting for her to do. However, Fallon Henley has been building up a little bit of her own, uh, trying to sharpen her wrestling craft in the ring recently, uh, mostly appearing in um, NXT level up. But she has shown up in NXT as a valid for a manager to of Briggs and Jensen but seeing her with uh, Carmen Petrova it's always been a good thing to see however it was Fallon Henley with the Shining Wizard that put her away put Petrovic away to pick up a win now our main event is of course is the Global Heritage Invitational we have Group B taking place first up we have the leader of the Gal of Gallus Joe Coffey taking on Akira Tozawa now uh, Tosawa has recently, a week ago, lost to Duke Cutson, unable to get his first two points. However, Joe Coffey did pick up a good win against Nathan uh, Frazier, but uh, picking up his first two points. However, how will this progress? Well, you probably can see, as you know, with, when it comes to Joe Coffey and Gallus, they're trying to go back to the top, as always, with the results of losing the tag team titles. But it was Joe Coffey with Belfast to pick up the win, to give him his two points. So that means he is currently has four points, while Akira Tozawa has zero. But the nature of this uh, Invitational, um, Joe Coffey is currently in the lead with four points. Everybody else, uh, Duke and Frazier, have two points each with one win and one loss. As for Tozawa, he is currently is zero with two losses. So we'll see how far they're going to progress with this. I can't wait to see what's going to happen on NXT when they continue with more of the Global Heritage Invitational. And I think that's pretty much it what we have for NXT Level Up. Uh, I think it's time for some news updates. Welcome to our new news update. So this is what we have for all of you. Now, um, our first update is coming from GCW with four things. Um, as you know, they'll be in the UK on the 16th of September. On that particular day, Thrusty will be in action taking on Team Mayflower. So that's going to be a very interesting match to watch. Now, when they head to Germany for the two mat events, this is what we have for the Long Live GCW on the 22nd. Dark Sheik will be in action taking on Becca. And then, that, then the following day for the GCW versus the World, we have G, uh, SJ Cunt, members of uh, Second Gear Crew, and Alley Catch will be in action to take on Ambos. Now, I don't know who these guys are. I hope I get to see that. And then finally for... Blood on the Hills 2 on the 14th of October. Steph the Landers makes her return to um, GCW. However, I don't know if Matt Cardona will be joining her. But we'll see what happens. Now, an interesting development has hit, happened. Now, if you guys have been watching NWA for, for who knows, when they restarted their entire programming, 
we have been seeing Velvet Sky as for a while, for maybe a year or two, as a commentator, which I have to say she did a pretty good job, and I think she was very uh, helpful on that. However, uh, in recent months, we haven't been seeing her. She left uh, the promotion for a little while to be taking some time off. Uh, she said that one of her cats was not actually uh, feeling well, so she had to take care of her. However, she actually, it was later announced that she is no longer with the company. Uh, she tweeted this t um, recently. Going forward, I will no longer be part of the NWA. I want to thank Billy for the opportunity and thank you for each person who I worked as a, as it was fun, uh, so much fun. I learned so much from Joe and Tim on commentary. I wish NWA my best with everything. See you all down the road. So basically, she will no longer be working with NWA as a commentator or whatever she was doing. But uh, I'm sure we'll see her down the line again. I wouldn't be surprised if she makes her way back to Impact Wrestling. Because that's where she made her career down there. So we'll see where that leads. Now, um, Spark Yoshi Piruza of America has announced for their event at uh, Rising Heat East in Orlando, Florida on the 14th of 19th. Uh, Zaya Brookside, uh, you may remember from NXT UK, and then of course returning to stardom to join Club Venus with Mina Shirakawa and Mariah May, has announced that she'll participate. And it's an interesting fact that she will meet with another Club Venus member, and that is Jesse. Uh, I wouldn't be surprised if they booked them as a tag team, uh, calling themselves Club Venus. That's something I definitely would see, but it all depends on who's booking the show. Um... Prestige Wrestling even announced for their collaboration with Tokyo Yoshi Pro Wrestling on the 14th of December in Los Angeles at the Globe Theater. Uh, as you know, there will be a show called Combat Prince, uh, Princess. Uh, they announced that, of course, Miyu Wananabe will be there. Uh, I'm so excited for that. I'm a big fan of Miyu Wananabe. Uh, can't see what, I can't wait to see what's going to happen that, from there. Now, um, as you all know, uh, a week ago or so, uh, we saw the return of Selena De Laurenta. We haven't seen her um, for a while, for a couple years now. Apparently, she came back. But what was the reasons of her stepping away from NWA? Uh, she um, had to. She even explained this with Busted Radio, and she had the reasons. According to what uh, the information, she was. Um, Needed to do uh, which uh, focus on school because she received a scholarship at Full Sail University. Full Sail University is the same place where NXT did their shows. Uh, this is what she had to say. It was incredible uh, returning at MLW Fusion. I was so happy to be back home. The crowd was exciting. I was excited and I really can't wait to share what I plan for the rest of the season. But you're just going to have to wait. It was definitely a bit of, uh, upsetting having to take some time off but i it was i had to do during time ta uh time because two years ago i decided to go back to school and i got a scholarship to full sale university and i have always been very pro school and i uh, really wanted to dedicate my the time so it was o only helps with my return because now i can come back more knowledge and with that rage that I've been holding on to for two years. I'm so ready to unleash the beast. So now this makes perfect sense. Since she was going back to school, it's totally understandable. But I'm sure many fans are just ex happy to see her back. I think I am too because I missed her her ways. But the obvious thing is what direction she's going to go now. We'll just got to wait and see in the upcoming weeks how the in the upcoming weeks for us in MLW. And I think that's pretty much it right now with our news updates. So I think it's time to call it a day. Well, I hope everybody enjoys this episode coming up. Um, we will continue with more of New Japan Pro Wrestling with Road to Destruction. Anything could happen un since we get to the 24th of September. Uh, we have already passed Victory Road. Now, I haven't seen it yet. Uh, I will probably do that down the line. Of course, we have another Impact show, the 1000th episode. I'm so excited for that. Um... As we speak, we did have uh, Stardom continuing with more of the 
five star grand prix uh good news i will be able to see the latest all japan pro wrestling this one features Kyrie's uh Kyrie teaming with sayuru noi uh, taking on Suri and unagi sayaka now we'll put that one as well part of the unagi sayaka uh very soon but uh we'll see how this one progresses down the line for everybody uh, i think that's pretty much it what we have for now but i will see you guys in the next dwz time same dwz channel I must bid all of you adieu. So, goodbye. Mwah. And have a nice day. Bang.